So let's explore my personal web dev trends for 2020. So the things or topics I think will be important in that year and that I would recommend learning or diving deeper into. Now, one thing will always be important and that of course is knowing the basics. In past years, I listed this as a trend, but I can see that this is not really a trend, but knowing HTML, CSS, and of course, very important, JavaScript is super, super important. These technologies in the end power the web, unless you're a pure backend only developer. So these technologies really are important no matter which web application you wanna build, if you work on the front end, if you do some work on the front end at all, you need to know these technologies. And even as a backend developer, if we're honest, you need to know how the web works and how these technologies work, at least roughly. Now, of course, you will always specialize. You don't have to be an expert in each technology, but knowing the big picture and how they work together is important. And of course, JavaScript specifically is extremely important. We can use it to build powerful front-end user interfaces with frameworks like React or Angular. And on the back-end, we can use it with Node.js to build server-side applications as well. But with that, let's have a look at the top trends I identified for next year. And I came up with seven things I would recommend that you look into or that you explore in the next year. Now, the trends are not necessarily ordered by importance, basically just in the order they came into my mind. And one trend we absolutely have, and which we already had in this year, is of course that the JavaScript frameworks, the big frameworks and libraries will stay important. React, Angular, or Vue, I would recommend that you know at least one of them if you are into front-end web development. If you are not, if you're only interested in back-end web development, this of course is not really a trend for you. You might still wanna explore one of them to understand what your front-end developer teammates are doing, but of course you don't need to learn it. If you are a full stack or front-end web developer though, then you definitely need to know one of them and learning one of them and diving deeper in that topic or maybe also picking up a second one is something I absolutely recommend here. It makes you a better developer and it will be the tool you work with for the next years. And speaking of that, I often get asked which one you should choose. Now, for one, I have a dedicated video and article on that, which you can check out. But besides that, they're really all great. Right now, React and Angular are the biggest ones. They get used by most companies, but Vue also has a decent community and some large companies which are using it. So unless you're applying for a specific job where you know that the company uses React or uses Angular, you can pick any of those and you'll have a great framework for building amazing user interfaces. Now, also related to front-end web development, but not only, is website performance and optimization techniques. Now, what do I mean with this trend? It has always been important that you write good code and that you build web applications, no matter if that's on the front-end or the back-end, which have a good performance and which, uh, well, basically execute as fast as possible and provide a good user experience. That has always been important. But with ever more third-party libraries and frameworks, which we're using in our projects, it becomes more and more important. Also with more and more regions on the world gaining access to the internet, it's more important than ever before to ship websites, to ship web applications that perform great. Now, if you're a front-end web developer, that means shipping as little code as possible optimizing your images, creating accessible web pages as well, not just small and fast ones, but also accessible ones, which everyone is able to use. And on the back end, of course, you also wanna create web applications that are fast to use, provide short response times, and so on. This has always been important, but it's definitely not getting less important. It also is a huge topic which sometimes can be overwhelming because so many parts make up this topic. On the front end, as I said, we have the different assets we're using like JavaScript and images and accessibility. And on the back end, we also have tons of languages we can use and tons of libraries all working together. But it is a topic I would recommend that you explore to find out what's all inside of this topic and where you as a developer could grow. 
kind of related to that, you could say, is another major trend, microservices. Also, this trend is not new. And by the way, that is probably the case for all those trends. After all, the web is a evolving thing. But microservices also are becoming more and more important or interesting. Now, what are microservices? Put in simple terms, a microservice architecture simply means that, especially on the back end, you don't just have, let's say, one huge database which stores all the data that belongs to your application and one huge API with all the endpoints, but that you have multiple, smaller, individually managed and still connected parts that make up that bigger system. So if you're building an online shop, you could have one microservice that's made up of an API and a small database for storing the products, a separate one for storing the orders, and a last one for storing your users. Now, of course, these different APIs will also talk to each other, but if you have smaller individual pieces, which probably are managed by separate teams, then every team is able to move faster of course, documentation is key here so that all the services can talk to each other. And in general, there are some concepts there which should be kept in mind. So diving into microservices can be interesting for large scale projects and applications in order to manage them more efficiently and ultimately, hopefully also provide a great user experience and great performance. Another big trend, which I also listed in past years already, is serverless. Now, serverless does not mean that we're not working with servers anymore. It just means that we're not managing them on our own. Instead, nowadays, we have tons of resources like AWS Lambda and a lot of other AWS resources and also on Azure and Google Cloud and so on, which we can use to run code on demand in isolation. Advantages of serverless are that you only pay for what you use. If code doesn't execute, you don't pay for its hosting. That you also can scale quickly. If you have, let's say, a function that adds a user to a newsletter list, then this will execute one time for one user. And if 1,000 users sign up at the same time, simply 1,000 separate instances of that function run simultaneously, so to say. Therefore, you got infinite scalability at a very low price point out of the box, which is why serverless is amazing. And if you want to learn more on that, we got some resources on that, which you find linked below the video. And in general, that's true for all the trends I'm mentioning here. If we got resources on those topics, both free and paid, you'll find them below the video. Let's move on. Machine learning and artificial intelligence are, of course, mega trends in general, also outside of web development. There are a lot of things that can be achieved with that and a lot of untapped potential. But also inside of our web development cosmos, there is a lot we can do with machine learning and artificial intelligence. For example, there are projects that allow us to use machine learning and AI to predict which parts of the web page a user might visit next so that together with code splitting, where we only download source code when it's really needed, we can download code in advance before a user uses a certain feature on the page. Things like that can really help us build amazing user experiences. And of course, it's not just about smart code downloading. It's also about adding features to your web pages, which rely on machine learning and artificial intelligence, like product recommendations, chatbots, and so on. So really a lot of exciting things we can dive into there inside of the web development world, but also outside of it, of course. Now, clearly focused on web development is the next trend I want to mention here, and that is testing. Now, testing is, of course, not new. And it also is not new that testing matters and can really, really ensure that you're writing clean and working code and you don't break code when you work on updates. But I would argue that the more complex our applications tend to get and the more technologies that are involved, and especially when also looking into architectures like microservices and so on, testing is definitely not becoming less important, at least. I would argue it's becoming more important. We want to ensure that our code works. And we're living in a world where, depending on the project size, of course, and the kind of project, but where we often ship new versions of our 
applications multiple times a day, maybe multiple times an hour, or at least a couple of times per month or week. And if you do so, you of course want to ensure that your web application doesn't break when you add a new feature or when you fix a bug. And manually testing everything is only possible up to a certain extent. The bigger your application is, the more features it has, the more people that are working on it, well, the harder it gets to test it manually. So automated testing with unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -end testing matters, and therefore is an area I would recommend that you at least have a look at. Now, the last trend I wanna specify here is the trend to progressive web apps and cross-platform apps. Now, again, just like all these trends actually, this will of course not affect everyone, but I would argue a lot of web developers. It's really great that we're living in a time where it has never been easier to write code once and ship it for multiple platforms to build native mobile apps based on web apps with tools like Capacitor, Ionic, or to use web dev knowledge like JavaScript or certain framework knowledge combined with tools like React Native or NativeScript to build native mobile apps. But it's also not just about native mobile apps. Also our web apps are becoming more and more powerful. Often in a lot of browsers and operating systems, we can tap into native device features like getting the user location, working with device cameras, using face authentication, stuff like that. This is already possible today in a lot of browsers and more and more features are getting added there. And we often summarize all these features also under the term progressive web apps, which also of course includes things like service workers providing offline support and so on. Building such web applications where we have no clear distinction between is it a web app or is it a native app, that is definitely a big trend. We got a lot of potential here because we can use our knowledge, which we already have, to build brand new user experiences that reach way more users. We can use cool features in our web applications. We can build web applications that work without the internet or can at least survive short periods of not having an internet connection. So there we got some super exciting possibilities and looking into progressive web apps and how you can leverage your existing knowledge to ship apps for more platforms and to tap into more native device features. By the way, not just on mobile phones, but also on desktop devices. That is really exciting to me and definitely a huge trend in 2020 in my opinion. Well, and then I got this last point here because the slide would have been empty by now. And that matters to me, by the way. I could have added more and more points here. That's not that hard. We got a lot of technologies, a lot of new technologies every year and month, a lot of frameworks and a lot of things you can learn. I also maybe overlooked some things which you find important. So please share your opinion below the video, share your comments, share your idea, share your feedback. Also keep in mind, this is of course just my list and I deliberately wanted to keep it short. Because if I specify 20 trends here, I'm not sure if they're really all trends, right? So that's my list. Share your thoughts on this below the video. I hope that you liked it and I hope that this was helpful.